Rainier? Am I saying Rainier right, guys? He's the new signee. You know who he is. He's double champion over from one. Total stud. Total stud, and I want to... I don't want to be condescending and get his name wrong, but it, but it reads kind of interesting, and I haven't heard Bruce Buffer say it yet, so I'm going to go with Rayner. And he said, I got more attention signing with the UFC than I did winning two championships in one. I wish he wouldn't have done that. If you've signed with the UFC, you are now with the UFC. You come out, you put them over. And that, he succeeded. He put them over. But you don't bury where you came from. You do not bury where you came from. I went to the University of Oregon. Just for example, I'll, I'll use it personal, but I would never get there and turn on Westland. Just for example. You don't bury where you came from. and What you did in the one championship got you on television. It got you exposure. And even if that media and or marketing machine wasn't the same, if it felt different over here, you still got here because of there. Be proud of that. Be proud that you had two championships. Now, it isn't right to come out on the UFC's production and dime wearing one shirts and talk about oh, one championship. You know, they're going to be in Colorado on the 15th and get your tickets now at Ticketmaster. They're playing a Friday night over at the same place where Mary Knuckle went. No, no, I'm not talking about that. But it's called homage. And you always want to pay homage to where you came. And it's not just an etiquette to where you are, okay? There's a selfish side. It can look like you come in with a humility. Then it can look as though you're just being polite, but there is a very selfish side, which is the adverse to what happened now, which is, can we trust you? This contract is very exciting, and this tension is very exciting for Rainier, and he, he's enjoying it very much. I experience I just, I know what he's going through, and it's very fun, and I'm happy for him. And by the way, he earned it. This guy, this guy can fight. This guy can scramble more than anything else. His first time in the octagon is, we'll see how that goes. That's, it's just a whole different experience. It's a whole other game. But his second time in the octagon, he's going to look real good. His third time, he's going to look real good. I mean, this guy is going to be a title contender. I'm telling you this right now. He's a very special fighter. But as exciting as that contract is to get, there's going to be a day where it's no longer exciting. Anything, no matter how wonderful it is. Running around in limousines and picking up in private jets and taking it to the suite of the hotel and everything as wonderful as it is eventually turns in to a job. And that contract is going to come up and you're going to want a new one. And that new one, no matter how many guys you knocked out, is not going to be as beautiful as you would like it to be if you don't have a competing suitor. Which you're not going to have if you piss on them the first chance that you get. So, we just had it. A gentleman, I was defending this guy, 35 pounder, 25 Good pounder. Man. Thank you very much. You knew it before I even say it. Thank you, voice of Ryan. Ends up leaving the UFC. We fought for him over here. Ends up leaving the UFC. Signed with, was it with Brave? And gets into Brave saying he wants to fight his way back into the UFC. And it's just, it's one of these things where... He needs to be loyal to Brave while he's there. He doesn't need to build the UFC while he's there, but he does need to not burn the bridge to the UFC in that case. And now, more importantly, is here with one. This is their champion. If their champion got more attention signing with the UFC, he needs to understand and take some responsibility on himself. That is quite literally why they are independent contractors, so that they can go out and build their own brand, their own way. Talk to who they want. Talk in the way that they want. Where? What it is they choose. Get that gimmick out and then we come bring you in. No different than the camera crew or the writers or the production or the hair and makeup. We're going to go and seek the absolute best. So if you are the champion, that means you're given every opportunity. That means you are given TV time to get that message out. That means you got that big shiny belt. That means you're going to be coming to the press conferences. That means the artwork and the digital. You're going to be part of it. That's built-in mechanisms. And if you're a champion, not once but twice, and so now you get everything I just stated and double, and you got more from some other company's press release, you are the one that failed. One championship, though they might not say it, is no different than Vince McMahon, who made this very, very uh, famous expression, where these guys would come in and they try to build a relationship. They'd be licking... Vince's boots. And you could imagine, right? Like, if you're, you, you could see where there, it would be a side of that. And Vince told him, man, I'll like you. I won't like you. One's got nothing to do with the, the other. 
The only thing I give here is an opportunity. That's it. I will let you make that walk. You will either get the crowd behind you or you won't. I will let you have action in the ring. You will either hit those spots and work out good ones or you won't. I will give you a microphone. I will give you a camera. But I might not give it to you twice. The only thing I will give you is an opportunity. And I appreciate that Vince said that because it's what everybody else is doing. But Vince was the one that found a way and had the courage and saw the wisdom in articulating it. So if Rainier had every built-in mechanism that a billion-dollar company can have that puts on an absolutely beautiful show, he has every single extension of PR and marketing and production. And he got more in a press release, which was done through nothing more than social media. And he was the champion. He was the guy on the poster. He was the headliner. He failed. Uncle Chael, I'm not, we're not going to dismiss him right now. We're not going to do that at all. We're, we're, we're going to look at something. I'm going to tell you what my problem with it. We're, 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 and we're going to go from here. And he's going to get a second chance. But what's going to feel like a snap of the fingers, that contract is going to be done, either willingly or unwillingly. There is never a time when you get done with the UFC. There is never a time, it is in your blood, that you get done with this sport. You will wake up one day, and it will be done with you. We want to have those bridges, particularly if you're a champion, particularly if you're somebody that may get their own Hall of Fame, will be looked to, and they have their own announced teams, they'll be looked to. When they come to your hometown, you want to go to the event and bring your mom down there, bring your wife to you, feel like a star, and they're going to bring you in the back and do the whole thing and put you in the fancy seats. You want to make sure that you're going to be part of that. Do not get somewhere where you were given the opportunity that everyone else wanted. Don't get there and then turn and put all the blame on them. They would have every right to put that same blame on you, and they haven't done it because it's rude.